listen to me, Jari. No, 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 Take the whole with power of glory. Ra 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 ra. Stop 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 stop. Sing something else. This place reminds me of Santa's workshop. Well, ain't this place a geographical oddity? I'll tell you, mate. If every town in the world were like this one, no man would ever feel unwanted. Travel oddities. Odd spot. Welcome to Odd Spots on the Travel Oddities podcast. My name is Amy. My bossy little co-host tonight is going to be Mr. Harley Covington. Harley, how are you? Buenos dias. <laughs> You're racist. Why am I racist? <laughs> this is a Christmas gift. This is a Christmas miracle. Aww. It's fragile. It's fragile. <laughs> tonight, we're going to be talking about the Christmas story, the movie, and the house. Yeah, apparently you can go there. It is. It's in Ohio. You can get the bunny rabbit pajamas, the footy pajamas. You can at the store across the street. You cannot. Can too. Is Sleep that in Ralphie's here? bed in your in yes. For real? Can you get the lamp? You can get the lamp. Let's talk about this. <laughs> So, 1983 movie, A Christmas Story, in case you are living on a rock somewhere and have never seen it. Ralphie, the little kid. Yes. Um, he, uh, I think it's Ralphie Parker, paid by Peter Billingsley. Yes. All he wants for Christmas is the Red Ryder BB gun. And he would shoot his eye out. That's what his mommy says. You'll shoot your eye out. And Santa. And Santa, the little bastard, says <laughs> you'll shoot your eye out. Kind of a Darren McGavin. Melinda Dillon plays his mom. Darren McGavin is awesome. Yes. Play as, the dad. Grouchy, grouchy. Uh, kind of referred to as the, as the old man in the movie. Because the story is kind of narrated by Ralphie as an adult. Yes. It kind of tells the story of this, this Christmas time. I don't time. think that it is the old man. I think it is my old man, as no, in my I dad. Think I think it's the old man. As in, as in my dad. Right. The old man. But he calls Not him the old man. The old man. But my old man. My dad. Right. But he refers to him as the old man. Right. But in reference to the fact that he's his father. Exactly. Not a reference to his age. Exactly. The old man stood quivering with fury. Okay. Glad we got that out of the way. <laughs> you gotta be careful. You gotta be careful. The location in Cleveland, as I said, was originally chosen just because it's pretty mundane. 1940 style house. Now it is arguably one of the most iconic buildings in American media. Or at least in Cleveland. At least in Cleveland. Um. Uh, I'm from Ohio originally. <laughs> you are. So I will say that the house <laughs> from a Christmas story may be the coolest building in the entire state. Ohio's a nice state. I'm just saying <laughs> you're going to have to work really hard to outdo the house from that movie. <laughs> The guy that, that owns the house, he started selling the leg lamp replicas, like the one that uh, Darren McGavin gets. For Christmas? That's for Yeah, he gets it as a, wasn't it a prize. In, yeah. It was a major award. It was a major award. And it was fragile. It was fragile. I want to know, Dad, it looks like a lamp. But it's a lamp, you nincompoop, but it's a major award. I want it. <laughs> he was eventually able to purchase the house itself from the movie. And he completely remodeled the interior of it to replicate the movie exactly. That is so badass. That I is. don't know why you would do that, <laughs> but I am super stoked that somebody did. I Yeah. Well, he's making a profit. Obviously, he's making a profit. Visitors can walk through the, the site. They taste the soap that Ralphie got his mouth washed out with for saying bad words. They can also go in and fire a BB gun in the backyard like Ralphie did. That is so cool. Yeah. Does a dog come in and eat a turkey, though? That's the. I think the really you bring your own dog. Question. Yeah, and your own turkey. <laughs> so is it? Is it a bed and breakfast? Yes. Can I stay there? Yes, you can. Can okay. Hang with me. Okay. So right across the street from the house is the world famous official A Christmas Story House Museum. 
has a crap ton of the original props, costumes, lots of memorabilia from the film, hundreds of behind the scenes photos. That is super cool. Some of them found only here at this museum. Among the props and costumes are a lot of the toys from uh, Higby's window. His, remember the window of the, right. the, the mall? The big toy store. The big toy store, yeah. Uh, Randy Snowsuit, the little brother, who got bundled up in the snowsuit. <laughs> so did I ever tell you the story when I thought that I thought that my daughter froze to death in the backseat of my car? No. <laughs> it reminds me of the, that movie. So my daughter had a lot of problems sleeping and... There were a few things that we could do. One of them was walking around in circles around the couch, singing to her, patting her on the back. Aww. Sometimes, though, she just wanted to go for a car ride. Mm -hmm. So we'd bundle her up, put her in the car, and we'd just drive around for a little bit. And eventually she'd fall asleep, bring her home, put her to bed. So um, we were driving, and I had the window cracked a little bit because it was like the heat. Mm -hmm. was making it hard to breathe, so right. the window cracked. And I looked in the back, and she wasn't moving, and she's wearing her coat, and her arms are just sticking straight out. <laughs> and, I, you know, I thought, okay, you know, maybe she's having problems breathing or whatever the, whatever the case may be. So I reached back there and, like, grabbed hold of her leg, and she wasn't moving, and she wasn't responding. <laughs> At this Aww. point in time, I'm totally losing my shit. I pull off to the side of the road. I slam the the car seat up and like <laughs> I'm yanking her out of her car seat. And as I free her from the car seat, she just looks at me and starts laughing. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah. That's my oldest daughter. Children are evil. Yes, <laughs> but her little arm sticking straight out reminded me of uh, of Ralphie's little brother <laughs> in the snowsuit. Uh, Mrs. Shield, the teacher in the movie. Mm -hmm. uh, you can also they also have a replica, or a, they also have the chalkboard from the movie from her classroom in the museum and the family car. <laughs> <laughs> Do they have the tongue stuck to the pole? I don't. I think you bring your own tongue. Yeah. <laughs> After reliving a Christmas story at Ralphie's house, you can always stop by the gift shop for a major award leg lamp. <laughs> that is so cool. And they actually have an online shop. We're going to put a link to it where you can go in and buy memorabilia and copies of pictures and your own leg lamp if you need one. <laughs> um, proceeds from the gift shop and overnight stays help support and maintain a Christmas story house and museum. So it goes to a good cause. That is really cool. I like it. <laughs> so are they are they part of Airbnb? How hard is it for okay. me to get? So they are open seven days a week from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. in the museum. Uh, during the Christmas season, they surprisingly offer extended hours. <laughs> so overnight stays. Yes. Available year-round. Um, you can actually sleep in Ralphie and Randy's beds. Remember they had the, the beds? <laughs> yeah, I don't know if that would... Um... Okay. Guests have the full use of the private third floor. Uh, it's kind of a loft area. Um, for the entirety of their stay, and use of the whole house from an hour after closing until 9 a.m. the following day. So all night long, you can party in Ralphie's house. Hmm. <laughs> so what, what, what's the rate for, like, Christmas Eve? <laughs> um, well, so the rate for booking begins at $495 per night. Holy crap, these and, guys are making a bang. And varies with the season. <laughs> So Christmas <laughs> Christmas Eve night is going to set me back a couple of Gs. Okay, so you get a free tour with all of your guests through the Christmas Story House and the museum. Uh huh. Um, you get dining and beverage discounts at the Rowley Inn directly across the street. Okay, so it's not technically a bed and breakfast. Uh, they don't serve you food there. You have to walk across the street. So it's just a bed. It's a bed for four hundred and ninety-five dollars a night. Got it. And it's like a nineteen forties twin bed. <laughs> Okay. I still think it's cool. I but I'm very much so. less inclined to actually sleep in that bed. So I you know, I with your height, I don't think you'd fit in that bed. <laughs> I can make it work. But if I your don't feet know if I hanging wanna. two feet over the end of it. Yeah. So some funny things about the movie yes. that I bet you did not know. I bet I did. Okay, so Ralphie's friends triple dog dare each other, put their tongue on the the school flagpole to see right. if it would freeze. I triple dog dare you. 
Hmm. Schwartz created a slight breach of etiquette by skipping the triple dare and going right for the throat. Um, Flick, who was played by a kid named Scott Schwartz, takes the bet and actually gets stuck to the pole. And then his friends kind of abandon, abandon him when they go back in school after the bell rings. Right. In reality, Schwartz's tongue wasn't frozen to the pole, but it was stuck to it. Okay. Okay. The crew rigged a fake pole with a small hole on one side attached to an air pump that would use suction to make it appear as though his tongue was stuck right. to the pole. Artie Robb, the actor who played Ralphie's friend Schwartz, said that Scott was being bratty on the set one day, so the crew took their got their revenge by leaving him stuck to the pole by his tongue right before a big lunch break. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, um, Scott Schwartz, Flick, for instance, had a successful childhood career um, appearing in A Christmas Story. And then the Richard Pryor and Jackie Gleason movie, The Toy. You ever seen that? Yes. I've seen Did that you? movie. Yes. And it's brilliant. It's, you know, Richard Pryor's got away. Unfortunately, he <laughs> fell on some hard times, needed some quick money, and? as many actors do. He was buddies with a kid named Corey Feldman. Um, vaguely familiar. Iconic 80s, 90s. Uh, yeah. Maybe. It's kind of ringing a bell. So Corey Feldman said, hey, Schwartz. Let me introduce you to my, some of my friends. Oh, wait. They're porn stars. Oh, <laughs> no. Scotty's X-Rated Adventure. I don't need to. No, no, With no, no, film no, star no. Julie no, no, Ashton. No, 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 <laughs> no. Childhood memories here. You can't do this. <laughs> bow, chicka, bow, bow. Uh, uh, move on. <laughs> so the house, which is in Cleveland's Tremont neighborhood, actually went up for sale in 2004 on eBay. A guy named Brian Jones from San Diego... Paid $150,000 for the house. Seems reasonable. Totally worth it. At $495 a night, totally reasonable. Yeah. The director of A Christmas Story got to start making very dark and scary horror films, including the holiday slasher classic Black Christmas. Yes, loved it. However, the movie he really wanted to make wasn't nearly as bloody, A Christmas Story. So he said in an interview that he was constantly asking studios he worked for if they would be interested in doing a Christmas co Christmas comedy based on funny kid stories, childhood stories that he, that Shepard wrote for a Playboy column. <laughs> um, they were latest pu later published in his book, In God We Trust, All Others Pay Cash. I have read it. It is hilarious. Everybody turned him down until his raunchy high school comedy Porky's. Remember Porky's? I do remember Porky's. Became a massive, unexpected success. Yes. Clark said Porky's gave him free pass to pick his own projects, and A Christmas Story was next on his to-do list. <laughs> That's actually <laughs> it's really cool. I did not know that the su success of Porky's brought about A Christmas <laughs> right? Story. That's very Who would have thunk it? I like it. Jack Nicholson? Yes. Chinatown, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. Slightly familiar. I, the I feel Shining, like yeah. I've heard of these movies. Here's Johnny. Yeah. The, um... <laughs> That one, does, that, that doesn't ring a bell. Oh, okay. Sorry. You're new. It's all right. Stick okay. around. So he got the script from the director mm -hmm. just to see if he was interested. Surprisingly, he loved it and wanted to play Ralphie's father, better known as The Old Man. Unfortunately, Nicholson's asking price would have driven the entire film over its modest budget. So Clark chose Darren McGavin. At the time, he had his best known role was Kolchak, the Night Stalker. Which I love. One of my favorite series of all time. Bullshit. I'm calling Absolutely. total bullshit that you know Night Stalker. Absolutely. The episode where he has to pour the salt in the zombie's mouth and he climbs into the back of the hearse and then the zombie wakes up. Oh my God. Best episode ever. I I hate <laughs> the fact that you know Kolchak, but there are like a billion other movies and TV shows that you have no right in not knowing frontwards and backwards. Let's talk about the fact that I can quote most of Quantum Leap, too. <laughs> okay. Stop uh, it. You're giving me an aneurysm. That's, so, yeah. He, that's pissy. <laughs> I, I have lost a little bit of respect for Jack Nicholson. You know, he but, was a big money man at the time. I mean, he was prime of his career for the most part. So, hey, Darren McGavin, I think, worked yeah, out Yeah, Darren McGavin was better, I think, <laughs> than, was, than what Jack Nicholson would have done anyway. Yeah, Absolutely. It's uh, such a good movie. Jack Nicholson is always a version of Jack Nicholson. Very, very much so. And Ralphie's I think that's a good way to put that. Yeah, was not a version of Jack Nicholson. <laughs> Absolutely, I love it. It's awesome. I have watched um, a Christmas story. I think every year that I've been alive, for the most part, like 
<laughs> you know what I mean? I'm not sure exactly when it came out. However. It was 1981 or 82. Yeah, so I was born in 78. So, yeah. So, there, yeah. there were a few of those years where you couldn't have possibly done that. I wasn't cognitive was or, it, at that point, so it's okay. I mean, <laughs> but for real, I mean, I always remember watching this. I watched it just the other day. I mean, it's just one of those movies that's on a loop through Christmas. It's always on on some channel. So. I think it's TNT. Always has it. <laughs> Absolutely. So, yeah, I mean, I just, it's just one of those iconic movies that quintessentially American, I think. Yes. So. So if you're in the Ohio area and you got some cash to throw around. Absolutely. I think this might be a Christmas activity <laughs> that's, that's worth it. Merry Christmas, you filthy animals. That's the wrong movie. <laughs> it's still a good movie. It doesn't matter. It's not this movie. You're putting me in a corner. Nobody puts baby in the corner. You're not baby. <laughs> so. No, my nickname, nickname was Hot Lips. I don't... For a completely innocent reason. No. (laughs) Okay. Check us out on Facebook, Twitter, TravelOddities.com. Hit us up. Thanks, guys, for sticking with us all year long. You're such a weirdo. Weird, 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 weird. You're so gay. I swear. I'm not gay. You're gay. Not that there's anything wrong with it. (laughs) (laughs) So, from all of us at the Travel Oddities Podcast, Merry freaking Christmas. You filthy animals. You filthy animals. You stole my line. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Harley. I'm Amy. Peace. They call me back, no Santa. I make my runs about to break a day. They call me back, no Santa. I make my runs about to break a day. Oh, oh, oh. Some boxers look like they have Down syndrome or something. Stop it, you vicious bastard. Harley, have you ever seen A Christmas Story? Little Ralphie and his radio. You're dead to me, woman. <laughs> have I ever... This is not a show that I should be doing with you. <laughs> How do I sound? You sound great. Am I way loud? You're not way loud to me. Am I way loud compared to you? Let's synchronize. Hum. Hum. No, I don't think so. Welcome to Odd Spots on the Travel Oddities Podcast. My name is Amy. Bitch, you lost your mind. <laughs> Do you ever let Amber drive when you guys are in the same car together? Yes. Do you? I didn't know if it was a I have a penis, I should lead thing or not. No. Okay, just checking. I invented this motherfucker. <laughs> no. Oh, you should check me out on Facebook. It was hilarious. <laughs> it's really good. You should totally check out my profile on fi- on the Facebook. <laughs> on the Facebook. Remember MySpace? Stand up and lean over and like stick your butt out. Like, I have pep and vigor. I do? No. <laughs> Negatory pep and vigor. Pep and vigor. I'm colorblind. I have no idea. <laughs> but I see a cacophony of colors. It is a cacophony. So there is no theme. Good word usage. High five. Thank you. You're welcome. 
No. Val Kilmer. Oh, I was thinking it was the that was in the isn't there a little baby movie that's maybe that's Baby Genius. Never mind. No, I haven't seen Real Genius either. <laughs> One. <laughs> you're dead to me. Two. One of the best damn movies ever. I am not a huge Val Kilmer fan. He has a funny looking face, like he's kind of rubbery looking or something. He was Ice Man. <laughs> I did watch Die Hard this past week. Great Christmas movie. I watched uh, Coming to America, which is also semi Christmas themed. Semi Christmas themed? Yes. Semi. It's winter themed. It's semi Christmas themed. Semi Christmas themed. There's a Christmas tree in the movie. That's all I have to say. Where the hell is there a Christmas tree in the movie? There just is. Just trust me. I think it's on a, it's on the guy's sweater. Remember they exchange gifts? Move on. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the Travel Oddities Podcast Odd Spots with Harley and Amy. Woohoo! <laughs> I told my mother to suck my dick the other day. <laughs> it was awesome. Her face was fucking priceless. I think you could go to hell for that <laughs> officially we were in a store and we were getting each other you know i was getting a cart she was getting a cart and i was going one way she was going the other and i walked past her leaned over and i said suck my dick <laughs> just keep <kept> walking <laughs> it was awesome i love that bitch my name is amy i'll be your solitary host this evening welcome to odd <laughs> spots odd <laughs> spots brett I told me i was not i was supposed to do like my sexy voice not my Welcome to Travel Oddities Podcast, y'all. I was supposed to use this voice. Welcome to the Travel Oddities Podcast. My name is Amy. That probably would work better. You think so? Then you're, yeehaw, gosh! <laughs> and I also agree with Brett's assessment that you have like some sort of like affinity for Texas. Yeah. <laughs> because you do I did say too, when Texas, I listen back. You're like. Texas. I listened back. Texas. I was like, Jesus Christ, where'd that come from, for God's sake? Like, like you're just talking all along, and then you're like, Texas. <laughs> I get possessed by some big-haired southern bitch, you know? <laughs> yeah. Bangs all jacked up to Jesus and shit. You know? <laughs> hey, y'all, we're going to Texas. Right. Get y'all some pecan pie. <laughs> y'all like Ooh-y. pecan pie? Welcome to <laughs> Texas. Pecan pie, sweet tea, y'all. I don't think they talk like that there. Uh, they do. No, I've been to Texas. I have been to Texas, and too. And they don't go, y'all want some sweet tea and, and pecan pie? <laughs> yes, they do. No, they don't. That's a little more, that's a little North Carolina. No, I think yeah. it can be Texas, too. No. And I really do say Texas weird. It's Texas. Amy. Amy. The word is Texas. When we're going to Texas, we talk <laughs> like this. <laughs> Giddy up, y'all. <laughs> y'all get in the truck, we go to the big house. Big hair, Amy. <laughs> Bangs all jacked up to Jesus. 